Today I'm going to deliver some messages about sustainability and most importantly is from Vietnam. So by the way, my name is Teddy Chin. I'm from Vietnam. I'm working for the company Aurora Investment Global Limited based in Vietnam. Um, before I bring you to the sustainable uh, sustainability in Vietnam, what we have there, I just want to bring you some new idea about sustainable. And in fact, I'm not trying to bring a lot of information on the best side of it because you can Google it actually, how much CO2 carbon emission in the world due to our government industry. So you can have all of those numbers on the internet. I try to bring some new measures, some new way. And no matter if you are anywhere in this supply chains, you are manufacturers, you are the buyers, you are the supply chains management, management retailers, you will find yourself here in these measures. And how to be sustainable wherever you are, as much as you can. You know, I, ha I have heard a lot of uh, companies say, oh, we will be 100% sustainable in 2020s. <laughs> I am not sure how much it can be 100% sustainable because sometimes we think something sustainable, but it's not. So let me bring you a little bit about the sustainable, the understanding, the good sign of the sustainability in every step of this supply chain from raw material manufacturing, from textile manufacturing, garment manufacturing, distribution network sales and, and purchasing. This is where most of the buyers, retailers here, and the final consumer. And then what next to help the sustainability of the whole supply chains? First, we started with raw material manufacturing. And raw material, sustainable raw material that have a lot. And I think with walking around this hall two or hall three or hall four, you will see a lot of uh, company advertise about recycled polyester, recycled nylon. It's getting known, it's getting popular. And it's actually pricing is getting a lot better than it used to be because the technology is helping and the materials resources are available more than it used to be. So it's, it's getting ready. But what else we have in this raw material except for recycled polyester and recycled nylon to be sustainable? So first off, let's say, can we use recycled cotton? It is yes, but it's very difficult. Most of the recycled cotton, the industry today, the technology doesn't support the, um, the post-consumer recycle in cotton. So when you recollect the cotton and re remake it, recycle it into the fiber form, it has a lot of hiccup, a lot of problem of dyeing absorption, the strands and everything. Right now, most of the recycled cotton that you see in the market today is for lining only. Why? Because they actually collect the, the um, recycled cotton from the blower, the fiber. So the fib they collect the fiber and make it into the fabric. The fabric would have very short fiber and it doesn't absorb the dye evenly. So they can only use recycled cotton for lining instead of our shell fabric. But yes, recycled cotton is possible. But then let's take a new approach. Then instead of dyeing cotton or instead of using the cotton dyeing, can we use the natural cotton? It's a new concept, it's a new way. And if anybody here is the designer, can we take this into the concept of the future using natural cotton instead of using dyeing cotton, using white cotton? So it's without dyeing, then you save the water, you save the industry, the CO2 emission, and you also save the environment. That's a new concept. Instead of using dyed cotton, using the raw, raw cotton or undyed cotton as the fashion. Um, can we use, instead of using cotton fabric, can we use another material like hemp? So what is hemp? Hemp is the, a sustainable tree. It's growing very straight, so it consumes less land 
and reserve more land for crop. Cotton use a lot of land, it's a large surface of land. But hemp is used compact together and grow in straight. So we are using very few surface of land and you can reserve land for crop. That's sustainable. On the other hand, hemp is actually growing by itself. You don't have to water it, no pesticide, no fertilizer. It just growing uh, on its own by the rainwater. So it's sustainable by that way. If you look at the cotton, cotton needs a lot of water. So you have to use water for cotton when you grow it. And you need pesticide and fertilizer too, just to grow the cotton. So using hemp is a new way of getting, uh, replacing cotton. Hemp looks like linen, but it's not. Actually linen, you cannot have a very fine yarn cow to have a very lightweight fabric. Mostly hemp is com combining with cotton and it has a slop and naps, you know, much more than hemp, uh, hemp. But hemp is a long fiber and very strong fiber, much more than stronger than cotton. So you can actually spin the hemp yarn to very fine yarn cow up to 50, 60 single and then making a very lightweight fabric to replace cotton. And hemp is a strong fiber, stronger than cotton. So hemp can sustain, come in please, come in please. So hemp can sustain or withstand from any heavy treatment after making the fabric. So like you do a heavy garment wash, you do the garment, a heavy bleach wash, the hemp can sustain and withstand with all of those aggressive and heavy process. So hemp is also an ideal material to replace the cotton in the future and also is sustainable. So recycled wool, many of the customers say recycled wool can only happen in Italy. And some of the specific supplier that they do this recycled wool for so long because they are collecting the cut piece, the wool fabric cut piece from the cutting room, from the um, suit manufacturing, and then recycle it. Now recycled wool is actually getting more popular and India is also known as the source for the recycled wool. And they are making a lot more variety from the recycled wool, not just only the simple uh, chunky fabric like the old time that uh, the technology doesn't support. And the question is if recycled wool can get any certificate so we can go into the market and market in it. Yes, they have GRS, the Global Recycle Standard, and they also have CRS, which is the Certificate of Recycle Standard, whatever. So yes, recycle wool also getting popular today to be used. Recycle polyester, as I say, yes, it's getting popular now, and pricing is getting more reasonable now for recycled polyester, and um, more and more brand is getting into this. Um, you used to see a lot of performance sportwear, Nike, Adidas uh, is, is getting into this, but now all the brands are asking for any regular item, like their shirt, using the recycled polyester, their jacket and outerwear is using recycled polyester today. So it's getting very popular. And even if you are using recycled polyester for fake down, for, for polyfill, you feel the recycled polyester inside insulation instead of the regular polyester to be sustainable. Recycled nylon as well. Um, recycled nylon has the interesting story because many of the manufacturers claim that they have the recycled nylon. But again, recycled nylon is not like polyester. There's no technology out there supporting the most consumer recycle yet in nylon. So most of the recycled nylon material is coming from the industry recycle. Like the nylon uh, supplier or the nylon maker, they have a lot of mismelting, a lot of waste, a lot of things during their production process. And they are recollecting all of the material to to recycle it and make it the new, uh, and make it the recycled nylon instead of using the virgin nylon or fresh nylon, that they call recycled nylon. So that's the number of limited supplier for recycled nylon only because of the raw material resources is limited. 
But again, yes, we have um, many suppliers in Taiwan, uh, also supply in China that supply the material, the recycled nylon material and the recycled yarn as well. Dope dye. So dope dye is a new way a new thinking of, uh, re of sustainable material because dope dye is not using water to dye the fabric. Dope dye is the color is is embedded or, or you know like in the master batch of the polymerization process. So you get the color already in the chip form. If it, it's, it's a nylon, it's a poly, nylon dope dye and poly dope dye already have the colors on the master batch on the chip. So when you draw the yarn from there, the yarn already have the colors. So when you have that color yarn weaving into fabric, knitting into fabric, you don't have to dye the fabric again. So the fabric don't have to go through dyeing. You save the water, save energy, and save the, the world by not you know, missing carbon footprint. So that is also the new thinking of the sustainable. And why dope dye? This technology is not new, but why it's getting popular today, or it's, it's getting available today? It is just because before the the technology doesn't support the didn't support the the, um, the master batch dyeing. So you have the color from the yarn look very dull. It's not vibrant. It's not light color. But today you have a palette of more than 1,500 color you can select from to design with, and you can actually combine the the best thing about dope dye is you can combine the color the yarn together and twist it into header to different color, to different mix, and the design are free to, to play around with the, the color card. And the color today, actually, the dope dye, they can actually do neon color as well for workwear, just so you know. Advantage of dope dye, color consistent, no color fastness. That's the best uh, characteristic of the dope dye polyester or dope dye nylon. And of course, you have a sustainability story to tell. So fiber dye. Fiber dye is also similar to dope dye, but it's for short fiber. And fiber dye, you usually see this in wool fabric, in top dye. So when you have the 100% cotton header fabric, it's coming from the header top dye yarn. And the yarn was dyed in fiber form. So this fiber dye is getting more popular because it had the sustainable story to tell as well because you don't dye the fabric so you save the water save the energy and you save the environment that's the story to tell so uh, why it have to be polyvisco or polyrayon and polyrayon spandex you can do top dye in wool you can do top dye in cotton but now you can do top dye in the polyester and rayon together and it combined into beautiful fabric. It can be both knitted and woven. And the advantage of this fiber dye is also color consistency over the season, uh, no color fading, and also no color shading. Because you don't dye the fabric, you know, actually dye in the fiber form, get it into yarn and weave it. So this is getting popular in the workwear, in the corporate wear, that they have to wear separate and they buy things separately. Uh, it, even in the tailor wear called suit separate. So you wear suit different with a different pants, different day. Um, that's getting popular now in fiber dye. And it has this sustainable story to tell. Um, plant-based material. You know, plant-based material is getting into our textile world not too long ago. And you see the uh, the potato um, skin, the potato uh, biopolymer, or even corn oil polymer is coming into our industry. And it getting into the polymer. Like if you know Sorona from DuPont, uh, Sorona is 30%, has 30% corn oil base. 
polymer and the rest mixing with the uh, other polymerization to have the yarn or fiber. So more and more brand and retailers or customer are looking for bio-based or plant-based material, including those starch polymer, those corn oil polymers, all of those are now available as well. Other than that, if you heard about banana silk, <laughs> it is getting there. It is in the market now, not in a big way, but yes, it's coming. And at least, you know, you like recycle poly, recycle nylon before, it was not popular because the technology doesn't support that much yet. Now it is very popular because it's getting more reasonable in pricing and it's getting easier to make. It's like a banana, banana silk, it just came out. It doesn't have the technology to support the larger scale yet, but will be in the future because it's sustainable. And it is, uh, and but milk fiber, you know milk fiber? If you go into Google and, and type milk fiber, they will come out with a lot of videos, a lot of uh, pictures of the fabric that they're already there in the market. In the little small scale, again, you know, there's no technology to support a larger scale yet, but I believe that it will be ready in the future, very near future, when there's more demand from all the brand and all the supplier. All right, so that's about the materials uh, manufacturing, and I'm sure there's a lot more out there for sustainable material, and every day people are thinking about the new innovation, new polymer, new uh, fiber that will help with the, the um, sustainable story or has a sustainability story to tell. So what about textile manufacturing? Textile manufacturing is also have a lot of new innovation, new way. Thanks to all the chemical supplier, to all the machinery supplier that work in day and night to invent any new machine with the sustainable story behind. So you can see this is the knitting machine we call spinet system. Spinet it is spinning knitting together. We call spinet system. It developed by Mayer and C, the, the Germany technology. And there are only seven machines in the world today, one in America for testing, one in India for testing, and five in Asia. The machine, the advantage of this machine is it knitting directly from the cotton roving. You know, in the spinning system, after you blow the cotton on, in the blower, getting the cotton out, doing the combing to remove the uh, contamination and also making the fiber softer, then it come out with this roving. So in the spinning system, this roving will be spinning. And they spin into the small yarn, and then they widen it and coning into the big cone and selling. So with the knitting, it knit directly from the cotton fiber. So we skip spinning, no spinning, no winding, no coning. You save three process, save energy, save money, and no carbon emission. This knitting machine, since they knit it directly from the cotton roving, so the hand feel of the cotton is very sharp because there's no spinning in there. It knit directly from fiber. Again, because of no twisting, no spinning. The t-shirt made from this spinet system doesn't twist after washing. You usually have the t-shirt problem that you wash over time and it just turn the size seam to here. You know, so that's a problem of twisting. But this knitting machine will not give you any, it will give you the advantage of getting away from that problem. And it is very soft, but it is saving cost, so the cost is cheaper, cheaper than regular t-shirt. I'm sorry. So this Daiko waterless, no chemical dyeing, it's not a new technology actually. It's been in the market for quite some years. Nike was the first company supported this technology and set up the first dyeing machine in Thailand. Today in the world there are about, I think more than 10 machines. It dying without water and no chemical. Dying directly, it's using the carbon liquid. I mean, it's, it's carbon, 
and then it's, it, it liquid dyes and then it get the, the, the dye stuff into the fabric without water. So this is say water less or no water dyeing technology is there. And it's getting more popular because everybody is getting more serious about the environment and about the pollution of the textile technology. So this is getting more and more popular now. Again, like dope dye and fiber dye, I already introduced to you before. It is also there. It's uh, a way of producing textile manufacturing that uh, is saving the water, saving the energy, and no carbon emission. Rangler had form dye denim. So what is form dye denim? It's actually using no water. It's actually using form to dye the indigo into the, fat, the yarn and weaving into the denim. And I think this technology right now is not popular outside Rankler yet, but the same technology, once any leader come out on the market, other innovation people, other company will follow. So this is getting there in the future with more sustainable story. They are using form to dye the indigo denim without water. Anilai free. So not sure if you know anilai, what is anilai? Anilai, it's, um, it's like a toxic chemicals in the indigo powder. The indigo powder that it dye the indigo denim. So usually it has their anilai to to allow the, the indigo to absorb into the fiber and stay there. The aniline is not good for environment, not good for skin. But then when you wash the garment, you cannot wash out completely yet. We tested many times together with the chemical supplier and the only gene with the stone wash bleached down, we still have about 15 BPM aniline on the garment. It's 15 ppm is not much, but it's still there. But you can imagine like a rinse wash, a raw jeans, it stay there on the garment and for a long time it affecting your skin. And even if you wash it, the aniline will go to the water and end up in the ocean or somewhere out in the river and it's the effect in the environment. Killing the fish, killing the environment. So aniline is not good for the environment and not good for human. That's why Acroma, the chemical company, the dyeing chemical company, come out with the aniline free denim. So it's actually using the liquid aniline free. And they can dye the indigo, beautiful indigo. And you have the aniline free jeans now, which is very good in the market. Kuntrans. I'm not sure if you have ever heard about this Kuntrans. Kuntrans is the printing. Usually you have heat transfer, which is you transfer the color from the film or from the paper onto the fabric during the heat uh, process. So it's transferring the color, like polyester or like cotton, you have the heat transfer printing machine, or they call it sublimation. Sublimation is a way of heat transfer. So you transfer the color to the fabric after heating. This cool trans technology is transferring the color onto the fabric in the normal temperature condition. So that is sustainable because it doesn't use a lot of energy to heat up the machine. It transfers the color up to 89 to 90% of the color being transferred on the fabric at the regular condition. That's why w some of the, um, the company like Uniqlo or Nike, they have the ultra light jacket. The jacket has very thin fabric, nylon fabric. It's about 10, 15 denier, 20 denier, very lightweight fabric. You cannot do print on the heat transfer because the heat transfer will melt the fabric. So they are using this cool trend machine to transfer the, the, the print onto the fabric. But this machine, a new generation, they call it satellite print machine. The newest machine, the third generation from this new tech company, that they have the ability to print two sides at the same time. So you can print one pattern on the face and you can print solid on the back. But I also have the experience uh, seeing the machine printing same color on the top and the bottom to be a solid die. So you actually can print the color on a small lot, like 
you design and you have only 50, 100 pieces per color, it's impossible to dye the color. They print two, co you know, two sides, same color as the dye color. And the color fastness is very good. So this is a new concept and new technology supporting our future. Number one, printing at a regular uh, temperature, so it saves the energy, doesn't have to heat up the machine. Number two, it can print both sides of the fabric at the same time, and it can actually print the solid colors. They emit like you dye the fabric, but in the small lot. So this is a new tech technology I introduced to you in textile manufacturing. What about garment manufacturing? What do we have new here in, in garment uh, industry, in garment technology? So first thing first, you have to source the material and the trims, the accessory, locally. Why it locally? Because you have to source the material closer to your source. Because people believe that you ship the fabric, for example, if we base in Vietnam, we buy the fabric from India, or we buy the fabric from China, we ship to Vietnam, you have to get it on the boat, you have to get it on the vessel, and you are using the energy, and you are using, you have the CO2 admission to the, to the environment. So getting the material closer to home means you are saving the energy. You are saving the energy for the future. So you don't have to ship the product from somewhere else to your factory and make it. So sourcing material and trim locally is a priority for many of the factory in Vietnam today consider it a sustainable logistic or sustainable supply chain. Secondly, planning production intelligently. Because a lot of time I see that the factory have a large order and once they place the order, they bring all the material in at the same time. And sometimes the fabric sitting in the factory for over two months, three months uncut. There's maybe a problem happening to the fabric after such a long time in a warehouse, or maybe you get stuck with your finance with a lot of fabric in the warehouse without being used in three months later. So that is not sustainable. In a manufacturing point of view, that's not sustainable. So if this is not talking about material sustainable anymore, but it's about business sustainable. So you have to plan very intelligently for your material, your trim, your production process, and everything go through smoothly so you can turn the production or you can turn your finance on, on, on a smooth run. So that's the new concept or new thinking way of sustainable, or we call it business sustainable. And also, for the fact manufacturing, except for so, you know, having the um, renewable power source, a lot of factories using the um, solar panel on their roof right now because it's shown the garment factory is, has a very large roof. And especially in Vietnam or in those country in Asia that we have a lot of sunshine. It's very hot out there, 32 to 35 degrees centigrade there. So solar power is, uh, is very getting popular in Vietnam today. And a lot of factories actually using their whole roof of the factory for the solar um, energy for their own factory use. Other than that, Lean and automation is also a new way of thinking sustainable in manufacturing garment. You, lean process is, I'm not sure if everybody here is understanding about lean processes. It came from Toyota manufacturing process. So you actually cut waste. You cut every single waste and the biggest waste in the garment industry is time. So this person waits for another person to bring them the panel for them to show in their operation at the waste of time. So in garment industry, we have a lot of waste, especially garment factory has a lot of waste, and time is the biggest waste for them. So lean manufacturing is also waste cutting, and that's sustainable. Automation is also helping the productivity and also helping with the time saving, so that is also a kind of sustainable. AI inspection, it is a new idea, but I see many factories are using it now. Making the inspection of a garment at the end of the production line is a pain. You know, the worker standing all day to do the inspection inside, outside, all the operation, it's just hard. So many of the factories already have the software 
to do the AI inspection. So all of the, uh, it's using the camera sensing, sensing for the defects, sensing for the measurement. So you just place the garment on the table and the software actually read the garment and they will tell you the measurement if it's plus or minus, intolerant or without tolerant, automatically if you place the garment right on the table, on the inspection table. Other than that, some basic uh, defects when you enter or are into the database, so the, the, the software can read it and detect it, the garment at the defects. So it's actually saving a lot of time. This is also a new way of thinking uh, sustainable in garment manufacturing. Other than that, the last one, but it's a very important one, is the uh, corporate social responsibility, or we call it the social compliance. So the factory, if the factory is, doesn't pay the workers on time, it doesn't pay the insurance, doesn't pay the right salary, this is not sustainable factory. So it's everybody is in, in the world now, I mean all the the countries are now demanding for social compliant factory to be certified by RAP, by BSCI, by this organization, that organization. And they're getting a lot tougher and tougher in the standard. So social compliant is also a way of being responsible in business. So it's a sustainable business. All right, so what we have in the distribution networks and sale and purchasing, this is a very interesting part. I would like to bring you the new idea. Um, can we make a purchase closer to home? And I think this question is very hard to answer. And let's get um, an example, like the President Trump in the United States saying that trying to make the American great again, right? So bringing all the industry back to America. Can anybody bring the factory from Vietnam back to America and produce in America? I don't think so. Things change. So you, it's not sustainable anymore and you have to go out because the cost, because of the price, because of uh, the availability of labor force and other things. So but just closer to home is seem to be a mission impossible. But clo but just in closer to home is sustainable. So you know it's sustainable that you don't have to bring the good over the ocean, wasting the energy, wasting the, you know, wasting a lot of carbon footprint. But again, it's not sustainable today because the market itself, the consumer itself already got spoiled. Everybody wants cheaper price. So it's not possible, but it's a sustainable idea. All right, so e-commerce. Is e-commerce sustainable? Is that sustainable for e-commerce? It is interesting because the a lot of a lot of information on the internet say oh well, the e-commerce has been increased 300 percent over the past one or two years. Nobody tell you how many percent return from the e-commerce. Amazon never tell you how much the return is. Only if you are the vendor from Amazon, you will know yourself how much <laughs> you got return. It's got hurt. And a lot of company in the U.S. is actually having a very good re return policy that they ship it to you and they ship it to you with the airway bill and a pox. So if you don't like it, they put it back and send it back. That's it. So it's not sustainable. It's a new trend of shopping. It's a new habit. It's a new thing. But it's not sustainable. Unfortunately, you know, the... Um, the apparel industry, or we say it, the shopping industry today is the entertainment. So if you ask the people to come to the store and shop the old way, they don't do. Internet thing is the new thing. It's a new trend. So shopping on the internet, e-commerce, is the trend. It's the new entertainment. We have to accept it. But it's not sustainable in somehow. <laughs> All right. So... Again, for distribution network that you have to do planning intelligently because you cannot buy closer to home. You cannot make garment closer to home. So you have to plan getting the, the product from Asia, getting from China, from Vietnam, from Bangladesh, from anywhere. But you have to plan it diligently and it, the lead time is it's very important. A lot of companies have to plan at least six months out of 
the, the, the year for one season. So you have to plan from the time that you do the place, all the placing until it, the good get into your warehouse more than six months. Can we do something less than six months? Can we do something for one month? Can we do something for two months? That is sustainable thinking. Because if any factory, anybody is still thinking, oh, you give me the order in December, I'm going to ship to you in August next year. That's not sustainable anymore. I know, because people say, oh, I, have, I need time to build fabric. And what is your fabric lead time? 45 days, 60 days. Sometimes, no. They just need it tomorrow. So. That's a market today, and that's a thinking way, that's a sustainable thinking way of getting shorter lead time and be ready to service any time and have to ship it out within, you know, the lead time has to be within what, two months or three months maximum. That, because you have one month transportation from, from anywhere in Asia to anywhere here in Europe and US, well, one month transportation already. All right, um, business ethic. Business ethic is sometimes forgotten because I have a lot of customers come to me and say, "Hey, Teddy, I I got this T-shirt from uh, I got this shirt from Bangladesh at one dollar fifty." I said, "Oh my God, how can you make it? How can you get one dollar fifty? Oh yeah, I got one dollar fifty. And I ask, "Did you ask the factory to be compliant? Did you ask the factory to pay the the worker on time?" You ask the factory to pay the, the, uh, the worker on the right salary, then how can you get that $1.50? It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable at all. Or, for example, the, the buyer keep going from one country to another because of pricing. They have to change the price. They have to change anywhere that pricing can be cheaper. People move from China to Bangladesh. People move from Vietnam to Bangladesh. Bangladesh used to be cheap, but they are not anymore. Because all the buyer coming in and demand for the social compliance, social accountability, they demand for better work, they demand for better life, they demand for better factory condition, better pay, but they don't pay. It's not sustainable. <laughs> they're looking for lower price, but they're still asking for a lot of standard. That is not possible. So I just make a joke. Somebody come to me and say, um, I need this for $4. Oh, no, my price is fine. No, but I need this for $4 only. So work, after working hard day and night, okay, I get you $4. I re-engineer the fabric, re-engineer the products. I'll get you $4. Oh, Teddy, I forgot to tell you my quantity is 1,000 pieces, but color only. Can you do it? Oh, I got, I got it. Okay, so I, I try it. Okay, I'll do 1,000 pieces, but color. But then, Teddy, I forgot to tell you my payment term is 120 days. That's not sustainable. <laughs> one, one way or another, you know, people have the, um, the ability to source for better, but again, as the supply chain, we all get connected. And it's affecting one way or another. If you, I got affected, my worker will get affected too. And so that's, you push me and I'm pushing around the supply chain. What do I can do? I push my fabric guy, I push my fa garment factory guy, they got affected too. So that's the new thinking way of sustainable. And how can we be sustainable in this way? I'm not asking for any buyer to go in and say, Teddy, you know, this, everybody offered me $4 and I give you fine. No, but something have to be reasonable in the same way. All right, so I like this one, the new 4B. You know, the old 4B was, uh, uh, it's old, it's the old school, it's old time. The new 4B uh, today, Bibo are talking about first profit. Second is Bibo. Then they build the products. Then they consider about planet. But it's the dilemma. It's the catch-22 because everybody wants sustainable. Everybody wants to be sustainable, uh, sustainable. but then, Okay, so let's think about planet. Okay, so I have the sustainable products. But in the end, oh no, your product is too expensive, I can't buy. My profit is first. So, which way I have to do? You want me to be, as an innovation company, getting you some products, sustainable for the planet, and good for people, and you are looking for profit. 
So this is a new B. Actually, the, I, there's no answer here, but it's a new idea just to bring up between profit, Bebo, products, and planet. So if we want to be sustainable, it has to be a reasonable way to put this together. All right, final consuming. Can the consumer reduce buying? Yes, they can, but again, the, the retailers or the, the one who sell to the consumer, they don't want it. They want to sell more because their profit is so slim and they want to get sell more quantity to get more profit back. So they are pushing the consumer to buy. Can the consumer, does the consumer, if the consumer stop buying for one year, do they still have clothes to wear? I'm sure yes. Because shopping today is entertainment, not a necessity anymore. So, but if the consumer stop buying, all the retailers got scary. Oh my God, my turnover is down, my, my profits is down. How can we do it? Pushing for lower price, doing the promotion, getting the marketing, not in the markdown, everybody is going back and buy. Thus, we cannot boost the consumer to buy less. But actually, buying less, will be sustainable, I'll tell you why. So, fast fashion. Everybody is talking about fast fashion in Europe, in America, everywhere, fast fashion. Is fast fashion sustainable? Do you think fast fashion is sustainable? I, I agree with you, fast fashion is not sustainable. Because you do fast fashion, you turn quick, you actually need price and you actually take a lot of things out of the products. The consumer believe fast fashion is is just for fashion and then they wear it for one time. They wear it for one week and then they just don't even remember they bought it. And they throw it. And in the end, the products ended in the landfill, end up in the ocean, ended in the environment, wherever that you think is polluted. But fast fashion, the concept of the fast fashion is from the retailers that want to sell more and faster and actually spoil up all the consumer. The consumer just buy it for cheap and they wear it for one time, I dump it. So fast fashion is not sustainable. All right, so can the consumer remake their clothes into something else? This is something, yes. But it needs the education. It needs a lot of program. It needs a lot of big voices from all the big brand a leader like Nike, Adidas, like Gap, like all the big company that they have to be the leader of the education. So the consumer can think, oh, okay, I have to be responsible to be sustainable in my position as much as I can. So if I can reuse the garment, I don't use it anymore, or I make it into something else, I donate it to something else where they need, rather than just dump it in the landfill. So that is the new way of thinking for sustainable. And we need all the brand out there, on the big company out there, to do this education together and make the consumer aware of their responsibility. So this is the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Can we come back to the Stone Age era? And is that sustainable? Because we don't wear anything. So we don't pollute the industry. We don't need the dye. We don't need fabric. We don't have the carbon emission. We don't use energy, anything. I'm sorry, this is not sustainable. <laughs> All right. Can, can consumer repair their clothing? Yes, again, this is yes. We need some, someone out there, some brand out there, just to help the new education, to send out the messages, uh, to make all the, um, all the messages in their marketing tool that encourage the people to reuse, renew their clothing. All right, so I talk a lot about the new idea of sustainable and what do we have from Vietnam. So you see the flag on the back, on the left is this Vietnam. And we have green garment factory today. So there's a lot of factory using the renew uh, power source from uh, solar panel. They recycle the waters. They, they reuse the um, fabric cutting, it's all of those. So that this is getting very popular there in Vietnam. We have green fabric mills as well. So the fabric mill is taken seriously into non-polluted processing, no water dyeing, low temperature dyeing, um, non-toxic chemicals, all of those happening now in Vietnam. 
Um, we have the factory that strictly um, follow the social compliance responsibility. Vietnam is pretty good on treating the workers right. Uh, there's not many strike that you hear of about from Vietnam compared to many other countries. So Vietnam is doing a very good job on the uh, social compliance responsibility. This is interesting about sustainable supply chains. So Vietnam, you can have 100% sewing thread locally sourced, 90% accessory you can find in Vietnam, 80% yarn that you can find from Vietnam, 70% of knit fabric that you can get all kinds from performance cotton, cotton plant, 60% of denim fabric that you can find in Vietnam, 50% of cotton plant like um, woven shirt, bottom weight that you can do it in Vietnam, 40% woven synthetic fabric for jacket, outerwear, uh, activewear, 30% of functional fabric for outerwear, and 20% of wool plant fabric for suiting. Those are the number correct number today that Vietnam can offer locally from our meal. Recycle polyester and recycle nylon. You think that this only happened in Taiwan, only happened in China. No, we have the fabric in Vietnam already with the recycle polyester, recycle nylon, by importing the BOY from Taiwan, from China. So we texturize the yarn in Vietnam, we weave in Vietnam, knit in Vietnam. So the original source of the material is still coming from China and Taiwan for the recycle poly and the recycle nylon, but we bring the BOY instead of finished product and then we do the texturizing in Vietnam, weaving, knitting in Vietnam to have the fabric recycle. Um, fiber dye uh, of the polyrayon, the polyrayon spandex, fiber dye, we also have that in Vietnam. We import the yarn from India and from China that they already dye in the fiber form and spin into the yarn. We just bring the yarn into Vietnam for weaving, knitting in Vietnam. Anilife free denim. So I already introduced you about anilife free denim. We have anilife free denim in Vietnam now. So I think it's certified by uh, many of US customer and Acroma as well. It got the very it yearly audited, but the meal is fully committed using anilife free only in their meal. On the right, you will see that logo. It's my company logo. It's Aurora Investment uh, Global Limited. And what we have inside, our company is the innovation company. We are the vertical garment manufacturing in Vietnam. So we have our fabric mill, we have our fabric team, we have our garment factory, and we also have product development team in-house with all of the new idea resources. So we have sustainable supply chain that we manage. We have the recycled poly collection, recycled nylon collection. We have dub dye polyester, dub dye nylon collection. We have fiber dye collection. We have recycled wool collection. We have spinet system. I already explained to you the spinet. So we have the spinet system, a new sustainable cotton collection. We have hemp collection. It's just uh, it's, uh, sustainable. And it ally free denim that we also have. So yeah, in the end, I am not trying to sell the country. I'm trying to tell you what we can do in Vietnam. Any question, please? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we are at hall two, booth number M101. Drop me a name card. I can and request me any presentation file, then we can send you by email. We have all of the sustainable presentation from hem, from fiber dye, from anything. If you need information, sh I will share with you. So just drop your name card at my booth and then send me an email at the request. My name card is at the booth as well. All right. Yes. Oh, you want my card? <laughs> yes, I. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Oh, good. Thank you. All right, everybody. So my uh, section is over. And if there's no more question, thank you very much for listening. And if anybody's still interested, then just see me at the booth. I'm 101. Thank you.